In today's show, this 2016 bear market fractal shows Bitcoin price can shoot towards $20,000 this year in the next few months in 2020. That's right. This chart, which showed Bitcoin could follow the path it took after 2015's crash, implied that Bitcoin could recover to 10 k by June, and that it did with Bitcoin spiking above 10 k at the start of last month. This same fractal now predicts that after two more months of consolidation, right now we're in July, so we're talking about August, September, Bitcoin could hit $18,000 by the end of this year. Check this out, right? Mike McGlone just recently tweeted, Bitcoin blahs benchmark crypto looks similar before past gains. Volatility should continue declining as Bitcoin extends its transition to the crypto equivalent of gold from a highly speculative asset. Yet we expect recent compression to be resolved via higher prices. I'm going to be breaking this down for you here in today's show. Also in today's episode, Bitcoin price post halving starts to align with the 2016 bull run, a very bullish indicator. Taking a look here, post halving patterns are repeating, looking at the longer term view, analyst and proponent of the stock, the flow, Plan B has compared previous post having price movements with current market conditions. Taking a look at his tweet here, the first epoch was at $12, the second epoch at $638, the third epoch at $8,572, and now 9,000 blocks into the fourth epoch, we have Bitcoin at $9,250. Where's the Bitcoin price likely to go from here? We'll be discussing it. Let's check out this poll from Plan B. 70% think Bitcoin will be $20,000 or greater in the next 12 to 18 months. We'll be discussing it here in today's show. Also in today's episode, how can you not be bullish on Bitcoin? Analysts ask due to new data coming from crypto analytics firm Glassnode who share Bitcoin supply not moved in over a year. That's 62% and Bitcoin supply in a state of profit at 77%. Many investors could be profitably cashing out but instead choose to hodl. How can you not be bullish on the king of all crypto? We'll also be taking Taking a look at the overall crypto market as we can see Bitcoin and most of the major cryptos back in the green. Bitcoin maintaining just above that 9200 support. Chainlink just hit another all time high up 16% for the day, trading at $8.64. We have VeChain surging as well as many altcoins. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go from here? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts. And before we kick off today's show, if interested in leveraging other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio, be sure to smash the link below the video in the description and register for this free system entitled OPM Wealth. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, and let's kick it off by diving into today's top story of the day. This 2016 bear market fractal shows that the Bitcoin price can shoot towards $20,000 in 2020. That's right, Bitcoin's consolidation over recent weeks have convinced some traders that there is a move to the downside in the works. One analyst commented that the recent price action is signaling a potential distribution pattern as he shares right here a couple more clues developing that lend themselves to HTF distribution is number one rising demand on the verge of failing number two side by side ascent versus descent with selling dominant pressure from volume as we can see right here in this chart one fractal analysis though predicts that Bitcoin's ongoing consolidation will resolve to the upside in an explosive fashion the catch the breakout will come at the end of 2020 over five months away. So there you have it. Bitcoin could break explosively to the upside eventually. Well, still this year. On March 12th and the 13th, the Bitcoin market broke down, as many investors likely remember, in the span of approximately 24 hours. The crypto market fell by around 50% due to the pandemic. Bitcoin then plunged from the 7,000s to 3,700. Few expected the market to recover at this time. There were some, however, trying their best to stay optimistic. The CIO of Atlanta Digital Currency Fund, Alistair Milne, shared the chart below in the day 
after the crash attaching the following comment. So if you take the fractal after the August 15 meltdown due to the exchange dysfunction and place it on the end of Friday's meltdown, you get this, as you can see right here on your screen, the chart which shows Bitcoin could follow the path it took after 2015's crash implied that Bitcoin would recover to 10,000 by June and that it did with Bitcoin spiking above 10,000 at the start of June. This same fractal now predicts that after two more months of consolidation, which we're currently in July, so we have August, then September, Bitcoin will hit 18,000 by the end of 2020, as Milne explained in a recent update about the fractal where he shares, would you accept another two months of no volatility if it meant we go directly to $18,000 within four weeks of a breakout? Let me know your thoughts surrounding this question. I personally would not mind if it meant Bitcoin rising and doubling to $18,000 within four weeks of a breakout. Absolutely. Milne isn't the first individual to have suggested that Bitcoin's ongoing consolidation will resolve higher. We also have Mike McGlone, the senior commodity analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence, who recently wrote the following on Twitter, taking a look at his tweet. Bitcoin blahs. Benchmark crypto looks similar before past gains. Volatility should continue declining as Bitcoin extends its transition to the crypto equivalent of gold from a highly speculative asset. Yet, we expect recent compression to be resolved via higher prices. And he includes this graph, and I'll include this tweet along with the graph in the show notes right down below, which shares Bitcoin on exchange demand similar to gold ETFs. So this is extremely bullish sign considering gold has a multi-trillion dollar market cap and Bitcoin is still just a pup, right? We're in our infancy stage. I believe the entire crypto market is roughly a 250 billion dollar market cap. So we have a long ways to go. But will a flippening occur? I think so. It's only a matter of time. But let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below. And now let's continue. And in addition to Bloomberg's crypto outlook released over recent months, the Wall Street analyst has outlined a perfect storm of reasons indicating that Bitcoin will move higher. Some of those reasons are as follows. Number one, we have the Bitcoin block reward halving that came in May. Let's not forget the first halving that occurred in 2012. The market went parabolic over 50,000% over the next year. And then in 2016, when the second halving occurred over the span of a year and a half, the market went up over 4,000% Bitcoin in particular. So considering we just recently had a halving for Bitcoin to hit a six-digit valuation, all we really need to do is 10x from here and move up 1,000%, which could happen. The only question is, when will it happen? Number two, the increasing investment in the Bitcoin market by users of the CME and clients of Grayscale. Let's not forget that the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust one company is purchasing three times the amount of Bitcoin, which is currently being mined. This is an uber bullish sign. And the institutional demand doesn't stop there. We have Paul Tudor Jones considered the most influential investor of our time, just allocated 2% of his investment portfolio into Bitcoin. Then we have other individuals investing half a billion dollars into BTC. So is there institutional demand? Absolutely. You can bet your bottom dollar. Number three, Bitcoin's growing correlation with the gold market, as we just covered here in this story. Plus, there's other macroeconomic factors, such as economic uncertainty, such as quantitative easing, and the list goes on and on. Frothy stock market could change Bitcoin's fate. Well, could it? Although the fractal is seemingly relevant, a frothy move in the stock market could change Bitcoin's fate. As it's now common knowledge, movements in the S&P 500 have been mirrored by Bitcoin over recent months. This correlation has been noticed by JP Morgan, whose analyst noted in June that since the March crash, cryptos have traded almost like equities. Should the S&P 500 surge or crash in the weeks ahead, Bitcoin will break the fractal, potentially rejecting the sentiment. Bitcoin will hit $18,000 by the end of 2020. So let me know your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree? Where do you think the Bitcoin price is likely to go by the end of this year? Let me know your prediction in the comments right down below. And before we break down our next story of the day, Bitcoin price post having starts to align with the 2016 bull run, which is when Bitcoin surged over 4,000. 
thousand percent. But before we break this down, let's take a look at the overall crypto market. We can see Bitcoin up 0.4 percent for the day, maintaining just above that 9200 support. Most of the major altcoins back in the green with Ethereum up 0.37 percent, trading just below two hundred and forty dollars. Link just hit a new all time high. Go chain link considered the missing link of the blockchain up 17 percent for the day, trading at eight dollars and seventy cents. If you would have told me a week ago, link would hit five dollars. That was my prediction, but little did I know we would reach price discovery mode and continue climbing forward onwards and upwards. And I would not be surprised now that if we smash $10 this week, if you're bullish on Chainlink, let me know in the comments right down below. We also have Cardano ADA surging up 5%, trading at 13 cents. Miss Litecoin barely in the green, trading at $43. We have VeChain up almost 9%, trading at 1.9 cents. And Tezos up 6%, trading at $3.02. And now checking out some of the exchange volume. Binance down 20% for the day with 4.2 billion in volume. Hobby Global down 32% with 2.2 billion in volume. So we just see a sea of red as a lot of volume has left the crypto market, but many altcoins currently surging against the king of all crypto. OKEX down 33% with 1.6 billion in volume and BitMEX down 25% with $796 billion in volume. All right, now for our next story of the day. There's been very little action on the crypto market over the past 24 hours. We've been stuck trading inside this range with the majority of the high cap coins cooling off again following minor movements over the weekend. Bitcoin is no exception, remaining range bound as the tedium continues. Bitcoin managed to top 9,300 just yesterday. Uh, and since declined back below or just above, I should say, 9,200, which is still within the channel of consolidation, the long-term support zone is at 8,800 level. So a break below this could see things going south very quickly, which is likely to drag all the altcoins down with it. If the opposite occurs, it can also be bad for the current alt season, which Bitcoin reclaiming some of the loss dominance. So now let's talk about the post having pattern repeating, looking at the longer term view, analyst and proponent of the stock to flow, shout out to plan B, has compared previous post having price movements with current market conditions taking a look at his tweet right here 9000 blocks into the fourth epoch bitcoin at 9250 then shows you the third epoch was at 8572 the second epoch at 638 and the first epoch at $12 that's right the dots represent price increases since the previous having and show how quick past cycles were, the market cycles appear to be extended as pointed out by Tyler Durden. Fascinating to look at the cycles laid out like that, which reaffirms my belief that this next bull market will take years to play out and be less volatile. The devaluation of fiat, the global macroeconomic crisis this time around could have a larger impact on the price of Bitcoin and its next bull run. I personally feel it will. But on the other hand, with less money about, there may be less to invest this time, lengthening that cycle even further. In a related post, Plan B polled over 116,000 Twitter followers about their views on when Bitcoin will reach a new all-time high. And let's take a look here on crypto Twitter. He asked, do you think Bitcoin price will be above the last all-time high of 20,000 in the next 12 to 18 months? And 69.6% Basically, 70% said yes, above the last all-time high. 16% said no, Bitcoin will stay below 20K. And 13% of you said, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I personally feel Bitcoin will dwarf its previous all-time high, and it will occur this year in 2020. And I want to be on the record for saying it, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments right down below. On-chain metrics for the Bitcoin network are making new highs. I covered this in yesterday's show. The Bitcoin hash rate just reached a new all-time high. And we have influencers like Matt Kaiser, who goes on the record to share that price always follows hash rate. So now that the hash rate reached an all-time high, the Bitcoin price should follow, which dispels any notions of minor capitulation after the halving. Hash rate for the Bitcoin network recently returned to its all-time high of 135 exahashes per second. According to BitInfor charts, the last time it was this high was back in mid-May. The difficulty has also hit a peak, also confirmed by Plan B and reported by Crypto Potato on Monday. A 10% increase in mining difficulty combined with those big hash rate numbers could be the catalyst 
catalyst for a sustained move higher for the king of crypto. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you feel we will soar to new all-time highs this year? Drop me a comment right down below. And before we break down our next story of the day, how can you not be bullish on Bitcoin? Analysts asked due to this new data from Glassnode. First, I want to go over the overall crypto market cap. Let's take a look at where we're at. Sitting at $273 billion with $57 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. And the current BTC dominance is 62.3%. And taking a look at the top gainers within the top 100, chain link where we at ample fourth the biggest gainer up about 20 percent trading at a dollar 77 swiss borg up 17 percent trading at 12.6 cents synthetics network up 13.8 percent trading at two dollars and 78 cents waves up 11 percent trading at a dollar 37 and elron up 11 percent trading at 1.5 cent and as we continue scrolling down of course we got chain link kava v chain hyper cash v chain been on a roar to say the least how many of you are bullish on v chain let me know in the comments below also let me know which altcoins in particular are you most bullish on which altcoin should i be paying close attention to you let me know in the comments below and now taking a look at the biggest losers within the top 100 flex a coin down a whopping 20 percent trading at 0 0.003 aurora down five percent trading at 1.3 cents quant down four percent trading at seven dollars and thirty cents raven coin down three percent trading at two cents the midas touch gold down three percent trading at five cents and nexo which just recently partnered with Chainlink is down 3% trading at 19.4 cents. So if you didn't know, Nexo is a DeFi lending platform which has over 800,000 users. They just joint ventured with Chainlink. So they're now using the Chainlink Oracle service to fulfill their smart contracts and do what it is they do. Maybe a part of the reason why Chainlink is surging so high from these strategic partnerships. And now checking out the BitMEX margins, we can see the bulls are back in control, leading with about 11 and a half million in superiority in the last 24 hours with longs leading 50.9% versus 49.05% shorts. Are you currently bullish or bearish on the king of all cryptos? Let me know in the comments right down below. And now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated a 44 in fear. Yesterday was a 43, last week a 44, and last month a 37. So we've been stuck in fear for quite some time. What does this mean? Well, extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That can be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. And before we break down our last story of the day, how can you not be bullish on Bitcoin? Analysts ask due to new data from crypto analytics firm Glassnode. First, I want to remind you to click the show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the market. This goes for all 480 plus videos right here on my channel. Also have some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including the blog to my podcast, which could be found at crypto news yes Dot com. Not only is this updated every single day, you can also download the latest episode of the show in MP3 format. Also, be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Smash that subscribe button right below this video, or you can visit the direct link, cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, I appreciate your continued support on all the major podcasting platforms, including Apple's iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. You can also follow us on Twitter to receive daily crypto news alerts. My Twitter handle is crypto news news yes and for those of you active on facebook as i am i do have a crypto facebook group entitled crypto alchemy with over 17,000 cryptopreneurs from all over the world to become a part of it simply click this link request to join and i'll be sure to plug you in and for those of you active on telegram as i am i do have a crypto telegram chat to join this simply click this link you'll automatically be added and i'm looking forward to connecting with you on the inside all right now for our next story of the day let's break it down shall we despite positive fundamental trends not all involved in the crypto industry are bullish on bitcoin take for example bitcoin's biggest hater peter schiff the ceo of euro pacific capital who recently said bitcoin is likely to fall below nine thousand dollars taking a look at his tweet here on crypto twitter gold seems to be chipping away at resistance just below 1800 while bitcoin is simultaneously chipping away at support just above nine thousand i expected both resistance and support to give way with gold surging as bitcoin Bitcoin collapses. What do you think will happen? And out of 10,451 people who voted, 49.7% wrote gold and Bitcoin up. 
29.5% say gold up, Bitcoin down, 12.3% put gold down, Bitcoin up, and 8.6% gold and Bitcoin down. And taking a look at some of the responses, Zach responded, Bitcoin and gold will rise over the years. Bitcoin will just rise a lot more. That's a fact. I agree 100%. And taking a look at some of the other responses, Kevin wrote, Peter, the fact you're making this comparison is giving Bitcoin legitimacy, good work. And Peter Schiff responded, I'm not the one making the comparison. It's Bitcoin advocates who claim Bitcoin is digital gold. Well, it is. That's a fact. And many of them are just buying it instead of actual gold. Well, because it's a better investment with a better upside potential and a better hedge against the US dollar. That's why. And I'm just exposing the two given the mistakes. Whatever, Peter Schiff, we all know you're the biggest hater in the crypto industry. It is what it is. An on-chain analyst, though, recently suggested that one crucial on-chain trend is making it almost irrational to not be bullish on Bitcoin. Let's go, BTC. Despite volatile price action, a majority of Bitcoin in circulation remains inactive. According to data from Glassnode, a blockchain analytics firm, the percentage of coins not moved has reached 62%, which is a new all-time high. This comes in spite of the fact that 77% of the Bitcoin supply was accumulated at a price lower than current. That's to say, 77% of all Bitcoin can currently be sold for profit. I repeat, 77% of all Bitcoin can currently be sold for profit. And taking a look at this actual tweet, Bitcoin supply not moved in over a year, that's 62%. Bitcoin supply in a state of profit, that's 77%. Many investors could be profitably cashing out, but instead, choose to hodl. How can you not be bullish on Bitcoin? Good question. Let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below. Not only does this indicate conviction amongst investors, but it also indicates there's a decreasing potential sell pressure. Very bullish. Other metrics corroborate the trend of hodling amongst Bitcoin investors. Prominent gold bull and crypto skeptic Peter Schiff recently conducted a Twitter thread, and I just shared with you some of the results regarding that poll. And then we have Schultz Kraft, who also published 12 on-chain indicators, suggesting levels of hodling are nearing or at all-time highs, boosting the bull case. So let me know if you're bullish surrounding Bitcoin and where you think we'll likely be by year's end here in 2020. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments right down below. Well, that's going to conclude today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and journeying along with me inside this incredible crypto revolution. If you gain value out of today's show, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts and in the meantime let's sit back relax enjoy a crypto cocktail and watch bitcoin ethereum and Chainlink go straight to the moon and real quick before i go if interested in leveraging opm other people's money to grow your wealth and crypto portfolio smash the link below this video in the description and register for this free system entitled opm wealth and i look forward to catching you in tomorrow's episode peace